Hello, everyone. Welcome to Search Ahead, the series of interviews we are conducting to our colleagues in the field to check how they are dealing with this coronavirus. Today, we have Dr. Eric Borgstein again with us. Uh, some of the circumstances he was talking to us 10 days ago about, uh, they have changed. And uh, we want to check how new things, uh, new developments in the country and in his hospital are going on. Good morning, uh, Eric. How are you? Morning, morning, fine, thank you. Yeah, all good. So you were you in the last uh, in the last interview we had you were commenting on the burden that it was going to suppose this new situation where the personal protective equipment was required by some medical staff already and uh, the the prices and uh, all the normal issues that something uh, like that could bring and. Uh, and then after that, we heard and we were just uh, following the news about a strike uh, from the health workers. Could you just update us in that situation, how that affected uh, the hospital where you are, the Queen Elizabeth oh. Hospital in Blantai, please? Yeah, so we, we had a brief sit-in over the course of an extended weekend last week by nurses, doctors and um, trainees, basically, and that but that very quickly led to the implementation of something the government had already promised, which was to increase the existing risk allowance, which was something which was already in the, in the health service pay package anyway, but it just had a historical value, you know, when it was set many years ago, and so it really wasn't felt to be, um, to be very um, a useful amount of money. So that was increased and people went back to work. In the meantime, the number of cases has increased, we're up to 34 at last count in the country, and, but mostly still, um, you know, direct contacts of people who've traveled, who've come in having traveled from somewhere, you know, Tanzania or other countries, and have come in and infected those closely, you know, in their in living with them in their environment. So the, there's no evidence, as far as I'm aware yet, of, of genuine community spread in the country. So the numbers are still low, but having said that, the hospital is implementing, um, you know, protective measures, and there is a plan to, so that most of the patients will not come into the hospital, but will be kept in a separate facility where they can be quarantined and as as necessary. So there's going to be screening at the front door of the hospital um, implemented later this week, and in the meantime, there are plans to improve the oxygen supplies and to really get, you know, the facilities upgraded. And there is, you know, there is, seems to be now an adequate or nearly adequate supply for the moment of people. But that will change if we do start seeing actual patients, because then of course you need an awful lot more. So for the moment, I think we're on an even keel, but then it'll be interesting to see what happens when the numbers start increasing and certainly when the number of suspected patients start increasing. We were um, commenting on the lockdown, which was on the verge of uh, happening. It was just uh, we had the interview on Friday and it was on midnight on Saturday. And then finally it didn't happen because of a court case and uh, resolution. Uh, so I don't know how is the situation currently. The human rights group took out an injunction against the lockdown. And that was due to be heard in court on Friday and then... On Friday, the government withdrew its defense of, the, uh, of this, so nothing has happened since. We don't know. Mm -hmm. So we're not in lockdown situation, but there is still, we're still in a state, of what they call the state of disaster, which means that there are measures in place. The schools are closed, the universities are closed, and you know, people are encouraged to social distance. And meetings of more than numbers of people are also um, banned, basically. Yeah. But you have a feeling that slowly that initial response is, is becoming less, less obvious. You know, the numbers of cars are increasing again and so on. So um, we're kind of waiting to hear what's going to happen next. And I suppose it will depend a bit on, you know, how, how the numbers increase. There's quite a lot of testing being done of contacts. Well, not you know, not, not huge numbers, but there's still quite some testing being done. So hopefully that will guide the, the decisions to come. 
Thank you very much for that, Eric. And uh, I would just like to finish with the last question regarding surgery. In the last interview, we were talking about a high elective surgery had been um, postponed. And I would, uh, I would just like to know how these new circumstances are going to affect uh, or how you are doing with a more serious uh, surgery, kind of surgery, and more uh, urgent ones. So we're still doing most urgent, urgent cases. We're not doing some of the more elective minor surgery, but we're certainly still operating most days. Um, for the hospital, the general hospital itself, the, they're only doing emergencies and, and semi-emergencies like major cancer cases. And so there'll be quite a large backlog of, um, of patients who, you know, are not being seen. But I guess that's the same the world over at the moment, I think. And it's an inevitable consequence of trying to keep the numbers down and trying to protect the staff so that, you know, if things do escalate, you still have... Um, you know, staff who are not infected or quarantined to be able to run the emergency services. And I think that's really the, the, the philosophy of the, of the reduction in numbers to try and keep the virus out of the hospital as much as possible and also to keep the staff healthy so that emergency work can continue. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you for that as well. And uh, well, that was all from us. Uh, thank you very much for giving us that update. Uh, I hope things um, get going uh, moving and, and uh, well, we will just uh, get in touch with you for next updates in the, in the coming weeks. Thank you again and um, all the best over there. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you very much for having watched this video. Remember, you can watch the other interviews in our YouTube channel. And also, you can check more things about our project in the website.